My name is Daniel Wynn, and by day I invest in sports cards, but by night I make videos about investing in sports cards. I am the great curator. Join me on my journey to break even in the hobby that we all love. Okay guys, we are at WonderCon here in Anaheim, California. We just found out that this was going on this weekend, so we decided to come out here. Comic conventions are a whole different beast from sports card conventions, so super excited to see what's gonna be in there. Okay guys, so we are at WonderCon here. We're just starting off. We're gonna snake around. We're gonna hunt for some grails. Right off the bat, I can tell you that this is way different than a sports car convention. We had to pay $20 for parking. We had to pay $35 per ticket, plus $750 for a processing fee. So this better be damn good, <laughs> let me tell you guys. But we are on a hunt for a grail today. We are looking for a Hulk 181 high grade 9.0 or higher CGC. That's Wolverine's first appearance. That's the only reason I came here today. So hopefully we can find one. Hopefully we can uh, do a deal with the uh, the dealer all cash uh, the budget is fifteen thousand dollars guys okay so that is the challenge today maybe we'll find some marvel cards maybe we'll find some star wars cards who knows but that is the mission today so one other thing i forgot to mention guys today is sunday sunday is the last day of the, of the convention so you know what that means gold digging hour deals we're gonna see if we can find some some good uh deals and see if we can get some steals here maybe we'll tenderize some people miniature models uh, for some type of uh, war game, uh, Marvel war game, and these are all hand painted guys. Look how amazing these things are. Look at the shadowing, the weathering. Already I can tell you these, these comic conventions are way, way different. Look at the production value here. Everything is like so crazy. It's like being in a carnival. Look, they have a coffee stand right here. They got food. They got different types of vendors. Everything is like, I, I don't even know how to explain it guys, but like, it's kind of like the Mint Collective was, but fun. <laughs> the Mint Collective was st like strictly business. This is like strictly fun, but on the same type of production level. I would love to see card shows kind of step up their game like this man I mean no wonder they charge so much money to get in it's like an experience in itself about these comic conventions is they're not just like resellers buying, selling, trading like at, like at a card show, right? There's a lot of like creators here, like people who create like, uh, you know, pins, badges, t-shirts, art, all that stuff. So the creativity in this place is amazing. If you go around, you'll, you'll find just cool stuff everywhere you go. Okay, guys, I'm visiting uh, one of my very good friends. I've known this guy like at least 10 years. At least. We've known each other like 17 years. That's when WonderCon was. Yes. 17 years. Uh, it seems, it's, it's yeah. crazy. It's yeah. crazy how long I've known this guy. Uh, but this is Justin from Just Scoop. He's still called Just Scoop, right? Just Scoop. Oh. Just Scoop. I guess we don't know each other. <laughs> right? I, I, always, I always mispronounce it. I always mispronounce it. But one of, one of my favorite artists, he does all this cool, like, I, I don't, what do you call this? Is this anime style or? No, you, so it's kind of like, you, as you can tell, I have very yeah. angular yeah. shape yeah. and, you know, design style. Uh -huh. So it's kind of like animation design meets retro poster yes. design. Yeah. You know, so all my prints are, they're heavily inspired by 70s day builds, which mm -hmm. are, you know, certain color style yeah. to them and there's a certain, like, graphic element right. to them that, you know, when I combine it with my animated design style, it's yeah. giving me this unique look, unique look yeah. for my art. But day builds are kind of these long, yeah. you know, cinematic looking posters. So once I started printing these, it kind of set me apart a little bit. Right. I, lo 
I love his stuff because he always does like all like these uh, these pop culture references that we love, like Voltron here, Godzilla. You got a Doctor yeah. Who one around here somewhere, and you're do you're doing an animated short yeah, soon. Yeah, and, yeah, I have an animated cartoon that I've been working. Is on. Is that on YouTube or not yet? Like honestly, this is this weekend. Uh -huh. The first time I've shown it anywhere. So I, so I created a trailer for it that I'm gonna kind of show all this okay. year. Next year I'll start putting out a. Uh, Okay. You know, awesome. The, the cartoon's called yeah. Bronze Chop. That's Bronze Chop, guys. Okay, so check it out on Instagram. I'm going to tag him in the video here, but it's always great to see you, dude. Of course. Yeah. Right on. Yes. Okay, guys, so we, this place is huge. This is like the third section that we've been in. We've been here for like a couple hours now, uh, but we finally found the comic section. So now this is where we're hunting for the grail, guys. Let's see what we can find. We found the grails right here, okay? X-Men, 9.0, oh, $12,000. Hulk, 181, $26,000. This is serious stuff, guys. Um, comic books is, is just as expensive, just as crazy as sports cards. Uh, so we need, to, we need to do a little bit of walking around, see if we can find some deals, but maybe we might have to re revisit this and see if we can uh, work a deal. And I was looking at the Hulk, 181, or the giant size X-Men, um, but now I'm kind of thinking like, I don't know, like maybe like a low grade, Spider-Man, you, you have any opinion about that? Low grade Spider-Man. For like one year hold period, one one or more years hold period. I want something that will appreciate. Some appreciate. Yeah. So I would say some of the ones we have, mm -hmm. the lower number runs in Spider-Man, they do tend to run a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. Like even though the Spider-Man one is 40,000, those and the AF-15s are 30,000, those are lowest and that's a one Okay. So those tend to be a lot higher. If you're looking to start off with something about, like, you said what, 10 to 14? 10 to 15, 10 yeah. To 15, yeah. GSX is a good one again because their anticipation for the X-Men. Yeah. So Marvel has it. They do really good with the movies. Mm -hmm. They'll jump with the movie of their appearance and then anything subsequent with it, it'll continue to go up as long as it's doing yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. But and between these two comics, X-Men and, and the Hulk 181, is the Hulk 181 the most like desirable? Because it's Wolverine's first appearance? It, it honestly varies. Really? Okay. It'll jump between yeah. the two because everybody loves Wolverine. Yeah. So obviously when he's consistently around, people want that first appearance. Uh -huh. But at moments like these where he's not really around, you're not too sure, people want the X-Men because they know at least the X-Men. Mm -hmm. They're gonna come about. Okay. So yeah, it just so it's very so it's very comparable. It is. Okay, interesting. All right. What's the highest uh, Spider-Man Amazing Fantasy you guys have here? Two five. It's gonna be down on that end. Uh huh. And how much did that go for? Sixty. Sixty thousand. Oh. Sixty thousand for a two point five Spider-Man. Look, it's got a piece of it missing on the top, but sixty-five thousand. Check that out. And then you have a. Um, you said a hundred thousand dollars. Look at that, guys. Twenty-one point five. Point five. Stored grade and everything on it, it is still going for a hundred thousand. Wow, that's amazing. So the, the purple label means it's restored. Yeah, so yeah. you get these, it'll tell you what the restoration is. Uh -huh. pieces. If you look at it, you can kind of see this. On yeah. The turn, the color, so. Okay. Is that less desirable for collectors? It all depends. Sometimes it will end up being less desirable. However, for certain issues like these where they're just hard to find, uh -huh. it's acceptable. Okay. So I've been buying like the modern comics, like, but now I'm trying now I'm trying to get into the vintage stuff. Yes. And if I was looking if I was looking to spend like ten to fifteen grand, okay, I, I had Hulk one eighty one in mind or the giant size X Men. Those are two ones I've always wanted. But you're saying like look for something like like the King. So the King, up? the GSX is good because you haven't seen any X Men in Marvel yet. Mm -hmm. But the minute you get to see somebody in Marvel, that's also going to go up in prices. Right? That's when they'll pop. Huh? The anticipation. The wait for it mm -hmm. so something like a gsx will pop and go up and same thing yeah like i was saying with the king it's trying to get ahead of the crowd uh -huh. and trying to look ahead to see what people are really looking for yeah that just hasn't quite come there yet how um how do you guys uh, price the comic books are they based on like ebay sales or is there a more ebay yeah? and gpa GP at, gpa okay yeah, GPA. Yes. so we're looking at the last sold the average of it uh -huh. we try to stay right around there okay so check this out guys these are the, these are the grails we're looking for the giant size x-men okay number one and the hulk 181 but this was a little bit out of our range here um and you said the nine nine is ten thousand dollars nine point oh is twelve thousand dollars twelve and the nine two is thirteen thousand five hundred okay is there like a difference in price between these grading companies
Chinese. So. CGC has been known to been around yeah. longer. Mm -hmm. However, the person who started CGC went over and started CBCS as well. Yeah. So CBCS is not as big known as CGC, but it is definitely the second. Mm -hmm. So they, these don't have the same premium as this? Some places they do, some places yeah. don't. They're starting to come back, and the people are starting to recognize that yeah. they do just as good as grading as CGC, but if not better. Yeah. So yeah. it is all kind of what you're depending on and what you want right now. During currently, what it is, CGC is kind of backed up with things. The CBCS is moving a little bit faster. Yeah. So I would say go with CBCS at this time and they actually have really great boxes. This is the older one, but they're new ones. Do people ever buy buy this one and then crack it and then submit it to that one to get the, the premium? People do it all the time. Yeah. They'll do it CBCS and crack it to send it to CBC. Mm -hmm. They'll do CBC and send it to CBCS. I see. And another one of the things, the difference between both of them that actually works really well is CGC, you can have a verified witness there for for a signing. Uh -huh. They'll be there and they'll verify and get you the yellow label, which is like one of these. Uh -huh. CBCS, if you happen to buy a book that is already signed, there was no verified witness. You can send it into them and they'll verify your signature for you. Something that CGC won't do. And then with these vintage comics, is it like all about like eye appeal or do people just focus on the grade? Both. Okay. I appeal on the grade because mm -hmm. if you have one that is looks all right but the grade is a lot less, then it kind of becomes kind of sketch and it's like, ah, oh, I'm not too sure, I'll get it. But if it has a great eye appeal, the grade looks like it matches, mm -hmm. then it's worth it. Because sometimes, it doesn't happen often, but obviously with anything, yeah. you might get something that's kind of off grade uh -huh. and people will look at that to see, it's like, oh, okay, I don't like it was under Like it was undergraded or something? It'll be like a 9-0 and then you look at it and it's like, that's not a 9 -0. Let's look at more like an 8, 8, 5. Mm -hmm. That tends to happen not very often, but again, it's one of those rarities that do happen. Okay. And does it matter if it's like off-white or white pages? Depends on the collector. Mm -hmm. Some collector likes white pages. Some are fine with the off-white to white. So that's just personal preference, right? Yes. And I noticed they're like, they're pressed a little bit differently here. Yeah. Does that make a big deal? Like this one looks like it's overlapped a little bit. So that's how CBC ends up doing those. Uh -huh. It all turns to the casing. And like I said, this is an old CBCS box. Uh -huh. Their newer ones are a lot better in my opinion. I like them because they're filled out. You don't get that shaky feeling. They're cool. Okay. This is, this is interesting. What's your name? Jackson. Jackson. Jackson here. Thank you, Jackson, for the knowledge here. Cool. So we found a Spider-Man 1.0. Let's see. Over under is 30,000 or not. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, what are you asking for the uh, Amazing Spider-Man uh, 1.0? You already called 30, 30. 30, 30 is, see, I knew it, guys. I knew it. <laughs> 30,000. 30,000. Yeah. yeah, that's about right. That's, that's a giant size X-Men 9.2, 14,000, he said. We saw the other one, 9.0, 12,000, so. A little grade bump gets a little bit extra. It's great I've seen here though. Yeah. I think they have one that's a little higher than ours. Oh really? Close. Yeah. Because I think it's an 8.0. Oh wow. It's going for 500k. Okay. The highest I've seen here is like 5.5, I think. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. There's not a lot of them. Trust me. Like we we have like yeah. maybe top three. Oh wow. I definitely say top three as far as the grade goes. And the highest one I've seen besides this is that 8.0. So, you know, we talk about Marvel cards all the time, but let me just tell you, the Marvel IP, this is real deal stuff. I am not joking here, guys. Marvel cards, we love to collect Marvel cards, but that's just like one fraction of the entire collectible industry here. Comics are the real deal thing. The prices on some of these things dwarfs anything that we ever pay for sports cards. Let me tell you, $100,000 for Superman comic book, four, $450,000 for Spider-Man, number one. It's insane here, guys. I need. I need to dive deeper into this. This is a completely different world. I'm blown away. So we pretty much saw uh, all the comics sections, the high-end comics. I've, I've narrowed it down to the giant size X-Men. I think that's going to be the play that we have to make here. Um, we're going to walk around though. This is a big purchase. They're asking $14,000. That's the most I've ever spent on anything. So uh, we're, we're just going to walk around. We're going to see if there's any other sections. Maybe we missed something. Okay, we want to make sure that we're getting, we're, we're shopping around. 
around and finding the best selection here. Then I got to talk it over with the boss curator, see if we're ready to make this investment, guys, okay? And then I'm probably going to do some research on my phone, too, just to check the comparables on eBay to see if it's in line with their price, okay? But Giant Size X-Men 9.2, that's our target right now. I did also see a G.I. Joe number one, 9.8, which I might get depending on how much I spend on the Giant Size X-Men. We're going to have to try to tenderize that dealer a little bit, but he looked, he looked pretty firm on that price, but we'll see. We'll see. They never met the great curator before, so we'll see. you tenderize the cat guys i was watching his movements studying him boom 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 got him okay guys i i've been a toy collector my entire life and i swore off toys last year when i started focusing on cards full time because mainly because i have no room to display this stuff um and it became an addiction guys so i had to cut cold turkey stop buying toys for like a year but looking looking at these things being here at wondercon I might have a relapse, guys. I might have a relapse and start buying some of this stuff. For real. No. Uh, we took a break. You know, when we walk these shows, we always want to do a round first, shop around, do the research. This is the recon phase, right? Then after we gather our information, what I like to do is if, if we're throwing around big numbers, which we are, um, I like to go take lunch. Take lunch, um, kind of reset my mind, process the things that I saw and do a little research. So that's what we did. So if you guys have been following along with this journey, um, I'm looking for a giant size X-Men number one or Hulk 181. I haven't found a Hulk 181 in a grade that I wanted, which is uh, in, in my price range, but I have found X-Men, giant size X-Men, a 9.0 and a 9.2. Now the 9.0, they were asking $12,000. 9.2, they're asking $14,000. I'm still, I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm not super knowledgeable about comics, so, but we gotta do some research so we apply our skills from you know that we know from from sports cards and I uh, look up on eBay and I, what I see is other sales um, around a lot lower than that and I see other comics available at best offer below that so like the, for the 9.0 we're seeing it at like nine thousand dollars okay or best offer for the 9.2 we're seeing at thirteen thousand dollars or best offer so they're a little bit high here okay so we're gonna have to try to negotiate with these guys if we want to pull the trigger on that um, or you know we'll buy it online uh, sometimes it's better to buy online because you can use a credit card you get some points things like that sometimes you if you go to a show you can get like cash deals so we'll see if we can get a better deal so I'm gonna have to think about this I think we're gonna set our target goal um, I'm gonna go back to that to that guy for a 9.0 and I'm gonna target you know if I can get it for like eight thousand dollars okay eight to eighty five hundred dollars I think would be the target goal see if we can tenderize him a little bit I'm gonna go to the 9.2 guy and see if we can get it for like 12. 12 to 12.5 would probably probably be the goal on that. We'll see what we can do. Um, if not, we'll walk around. I did see another comic book that I want to get, which I'll keep as a surprise later. Um, I think I can get that one pretty easily. So we'll see, we'll see. So either way, we're winning. We're having a great time here at the uh, WonderCon convention. It's a lot of fun here. Curator family, where's the little curator? Little curator right here. She's playing, she's eating her popcorn. This is family time, guys. This is what we love to do. You know, we, we talk about investing and you know, sometimes we take it seriously, but also we gotta remember this is fun. It's fun stuff, guys. Um, um, so we'll see, okay? Stay tuned for the negotiation. Oh. Check it out guys, G.I. Joe, number one. I've been looking for this for a while. Are you guys firm on this price? Can you take offers? Thank you very much, you, appreciate you. it. Yeah, you guys have a good day. Me too. All right, we got it. We got the G.I. Joe comic book here. Something I've been wanting for a while. This is a special newsstand, newsstand edition, number one, 9.8. Check it out, guys. Okay. We tenderize them a little bit. Okay, we tenderize them a little bit.
Oh. 12,000 for the like, GSX? Yes. Like, yes. What's, what's the uh, best cash price you, you guys take on that? What are you trying to offer on the cash? <laughs> well, I can see I, like on eBay, I can get them, they're like, hovering around 9,000 on eBay, best offer. 9,000? Yeah. So like. 9,000 will be offered? Well, I'm their best <laughs> offer on eBay, so I'm thinking like 85. Give me a second. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you mind if I look at it closer? Yeah, I got it. G.I. Joe number two, nine point, or G.I. Joe number one, 9.8, guys. Um, this comic was in 1982, published in 1982, almost 40 years old. And we got it at a really good deal, gold digging hour deal on this. Um, but you know, this this whole experience has been really cool. Like it kind of opened up my eyes to comic books as being, you know, more investment grade. We're not, we're not gonna get, we're not gonna move totally out of sports cards, but comics is a great way, great addition to the, to the portfolio for, you know, collectible investments, guys, so. Okay, very happy about that. All right, guys, so this is that's a wrap for us here at WonderCon. Uh, we were heading out, and then I saw this artist. He had this crazy Marvel art, which I'll show you a picture of. I'll wrap it right now, but I'll unwrap it and I'll show you guys a picture. But we got a gold digging hour deal on that, so that was super cool. But overall, this was a great experience. I was a little grouchy because I had to pay a lot of money to get in here. But um, it was cool. It was like a carnival. Definitely better than any sports show I've ever been to in terms of production value. Uh, we didn't get the grail pieces, but we've got a cool couple cool souvenirs that we can bring home. Um, and overall, good time with the family. Okay, guys, so I'll see you in the next one. I'm the great, great curator, the ultimate gentleman investor. Yeah, the great, great curator always stays till the gold digging hour. So watch out all.